Hi, Tony Meyer with Windermere here. We're going to be talking finance today with one of my favorite lenders, Saul Bailey over at Cornerstone Home Lending. Saul, why don't you tell my audience a little bit about who you are before we get into our topics today? Sure. Thank you, Tony, for having me today. You betcha. Uh, I have been a mortgage man for 25 years now, and uh, one of the things that I'm very passionate about is leading by way of education. So right. uh, if we can help our buyers be more educated and confident and clear on what their financing options are, that definitely leads to a better outcome for everybody. Awesome. Well, so today what we're going to be talking about is how do you buy a home before selling yours? Is that even possible? What does the process look like? I know we've talked about this kind of off camera, but so what would be the easiest way for someone to get through that? What's kind of the basics of that process? Sure. That's a great question. And it's actually a very common scenario right now. I would say probably 50% of the clients that I work with have some sort of a buy and sell scenario. So right. the first thing that I always recommend, obviously, is to talk to myself or talk to a lender early on and often. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, I mean. First call. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, that's, that's one of the biggest things is that a lot of clients I find when they're contacting me, they think that they just can't do it. It's just not possible to be done. Mm. And so usually what we do is we start out with, you know, basically a progression of, are you able to purchase that new home before you sell the departing? Okay. And if so, what are the conditions? Right. And so what's the pathway forward? That's right. That's right. And so two of the main factors when we're looking at this is income and assets. And so we would always start at the top and say, okay, tell me about the new home you want to buy. Tell me about your departing home, what that mortgage looks like. What are your other debts? Do you have a down payment for the new home, okay. which can be as low as 5%. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and so the easiest path or the path of least resistance, as I call it, is yes, your income supports the new mortgage payment, supports the departing home payment while you get ready to sell that and any other debt you have, and you have a down payment. So that's the, the path of least resistance. And more often than not, that usually is an option for many people in our market. So what would be the requirements for someone in that process, you know, eligibility, how would that look for them sure. if they're able to buy before they sell? In sure. that instance you talk about. Yeah. So in that instance, we would just go through a normal pre-approval process, okay. uh, confirm that the income and the assets and everything like that match up and work for uh, lending requirements and guidelines. We would issue out a fully underwritten pre-approval and turn them back over to you to start searching for that home to purchase. And then after the fact, then you're getting the home ready for sale and you're able to calmly move into the new home, get the departing home ready to go. So it's, uh, it's not unlike any normal pre-approval process if you're able to qualify that way. Got it, so just like buying a standard home per se, uh, the secondary house, you're, in the new home, you're qualifying for both and there's no obligation to liquidate one asset at any particular time per se, right? Correct. Um, so if you had a client that was going down that path, what would be the key points of advice you'd give them? Yeah, the key points of advice and probably the biggest one is get prepared early. So just like if you're going to purchase a home for the first time, get your pre-approval in order, get your income and your assets and everything like that verified with me as the lender, you know, and, and get yourself prepared and ready to go. Um, I think the other thing that you need to consider is start to form a game plan around your departing residence and the timing right. and cadence after you've purchased the home. Because remember, the new home, that's exciting. You've got that put in mm -hmm. place and done, but there's still a second piece to this. Right, right, so. yeah. So I think those two things are moving in concert, right? We're, we're excited about moving to the new home, but during that whole process, while we're waiting to close on that, we should be prepping the old home for sale, assuming that you want to liquidate that fairly quickly, right? If you've got a different time schedule, then you can allow that to be the case, but you really want to work on those two things in concert so you're not owning two homes as long as possible. That's right. So if you have a client that doesn't qualify, as you say, for the plan A uh, side of things, meaning the ideal solution you buy before you sell without uh, any other options, what choices do they have? There's actually a few different options. So let's say we've got a client that has a down payment and they've got the money available, but perhaps their income isn't sufficient 
to qualify for the new home and the departing home, okay. and maybe the car payment or whatever the case right, might right. be. Well, what we would look at is, what is the plan with the departing home? Maybe they plan to rent that home. We haven't talked about that yet. That's correct, yes. Uh, and so we do have a program where, let's say your client says, hey, I'm gonna keep this as a rental. You know, I'm gonna be able to cash flow, whatever the case might be. We have a program where they can still purchase the new home. We can get an appraisal on the departing residence and use the rent, the market rent, okay. on that appraisal. So do a rent survey, essentially. Right, mm -hmm. to help offset that mortgage payment. And so sometimes that's the solution where we can qualify them income-wise. So Got it. So that's one option. I do have a question on that. So sure. with the rent survey, um, let's just say it rents for $4,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Do they truly get $4,000 of credit, or is, some, is it some level less than that? that they get credit towards their payments? Yeah, great question. Yeah, so you. at $4,000 a month on that market rent that the appraiser reports, we're going to give them credit for 75% so of that. So essentially 3,000. Exactly, yep, yep. to offset the mortgage payment. Perfect, okay, yeah. so you do have to have some extra cash flow to cover that right. situation if you go down that path. Right. So other than renting, what are their options? Yeah. You know, if somebody's not gonna rent their house, they intend to sell it, but don't have all the money to buy the new home, in cash, we talked about the bridge loan, the HELOC, what does that process mm -hmm. look like? Sure, uh, plan B would be, let's say they've got a ton of equity in their departing home and they've got the down payment right there, but right. they need to get access this to it. This is the case for most of yeah. our clients, I have to say. Right, yeah. so there's a couple different routes that we can go in that case. Uh, setting up a home equity line of credit okay. on the departing home. HELOC. Yes, yep. correct, HELOC. And again, the key to this is to do this early on and plan ahead. So what does early on mean? Give me a sense yeah, of that. Yeah, I would say typically a home equity line of credit or a HELOC typically takes about three weeks to set up. Okay, And so That's terrible. Right, yeah. and uh, so if the client is able to set that up and basically that's their down payment and they have those funds available right away, well, now they can go out and make an offer on a home and know that they've got the down payment. Got it. What got I it. do see, sometimes uh, a client might you know, find a home on a Sunday evening, and right. I always joke about this. <laughs> right. <laughs> they get excited. Mm -hmm. Call me. Hey, we... Offer reviews tomorrow. What right. do we do, Saul? Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. And they haven't set up the HELOC. Right. So that can be really tricky because now we have to try and set up a HELOC at the same time, which can make things difficult. Not impossible. But, but challenging. So, yeah. so early is really the key thing I keep hearing with you. And, Prepare. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get involved early. So, with the HELOC, my understanding is that the buyer has to qualify for their current home payment, the HELOC payment, and the new house. What about the bridge loan? That right. gives some options for them that maybe the HELOC is no longer part of that qualification equation, right? Right. That's okay. Exactly so, why don't you tell right. about that, please? Yeah. So, the bridge loan is a fantastic option in the event that maybe a client is not able to qualify for all of those things that you mentioned. Right. And so in, in a bridge loan scenario, what we would do is we would take a look at the market value of the departing residence okay. combined with the market value of the new home. Uh -huh. We take a 75% value of the combined assets. Ah, including okay. the new home. Correct. So it's not just specific right. to the, the current house, but the new home gets part of that equation. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And then we subtract out what you might owe on your departing residence. Okay. And that leaves us with what your qualifying bridge loan amount would be. So in most cases, our clients are able to take a bridge loan and finance 100% of the new residence. And the key here is that for a bridge loan, we are not necessarily worried about the debt to income ratio issues. And so what we would do is we set up a hypothetical refinance loan, like let's say after you've sold your departing home and you've paid off the bridge loan, maybe you need a $200,000 loan or $300,000. We'll make sure you qualify for that loan, but we're not concerned with what you're going to qualify for on the bridge loan and the departing home. Got it. So instead of in those early scenarios having to qualify for all the loans, like the plan A was qualify for your current loan, you come up with your own down payment, qualify for the new loan. Plan B, let's call it, is your current loan, a HELOC payment, and the new loan. In this mm -hmm. situation, you only have to qualify for the loan that will be at the end of the process. That's correct? exactly right. I mean, that's yes. so, so much different in a scenario in terms of ability to qualify. <clears throat> um, so 
what are the downsides of a bridge loan? Yeah, I always tell people a bridge loan is what I call a product of convenience. Okay. Because it is extremely convenient. Uh, you're able to buy that new home with basically 100% financing. The downside of a bridge loan is it is not inexpensive. So it's about double the cost of what you might normally see on a regular mortgage. Okay. So that's the downside. So uh, can you give me a scenario, approximates, right? We're, 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 sure. we're not giving uh, exact rate quotes today, but can you right. give me a scenario, just so someone has an understanding, is it the difference between two and $10,000 to do a bridge loan versus yeah. a HELOC? Um, you know, sure. obviously being able to buy the home you didn't think you could do any other way has its values. Certainly. But the question is, you know, is that relevant to the cost and does that make sense, right? right. So. Can you give us a you know basic scenario what that might look like? Absolutely, sure. So let's say on a traditional mortgage and traditional financing, let's just say an $800,000 home, right? Okay. Typically, uh, your total closing costs and prepaid items on a loan like that might be around $12,000, $12,500. Okay, so about okay. a point and a half. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. With a bridge loan, you're probably gonna be closer to twenty to 22000 Okay. So, so it's roughly the ten grand that I was kind of right. tossing a number out, right? right? Um, and that certainly, you know, when you compare it to the costs of selling your house and moving into a rental, not knowing where you're going to go to buy that next house, that is, yes, it's a cost, but all those other things I just mentioned have cost too, right? right? The unknown factor, the ability to go buy a home before you sell yours has value to a family or to an individual, not having to move twice to accomplish that process, um, you know, having to sell your home, move into a short-term rental, and then hope to find the next house. You get to kind of sit in your house and wait till you find the house that you love, buy that home and move, make that move. There's no free way to do this, but to me that seems to be a, a viable option for somebody, right, at the yeah. end of the day. So um, we kind of talked about requirements, eligibility. Is there anything else you want to add to that process on the on the bridge loans per se? Yeah, thank you. And I think you nailed it. And here's an example I always give is on a bridge loan without having to maybe make two moves. Movers are not inexpensive either. Right. And if you have children, right. this complicates things further. And exactly. so I think quickly, most of my clients come to realize gosh, the value is absolutely there, you know, right. when I factor in everything else. All those other dynamics, yeah. you betcha. Um, the other thing that I always tell people to consider and keep in mind on a bridge loan or a HELOC or a departing residence scenario is that you will still have additional payments until that home is sold. Right. And so, on so a, you still have to make the payments regardless. Right. We maybe don't have to qualify for them, but you still right. have to make those payments. Right, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good point. So yeah. some reserves need to be set aside to accomplish that process. Yes. Any other advice you'd have for a client thinking about that path? Yeah, I think one bit of advice is to just call me and just let's have a conversation on what your options are. So many times, like I mentioned earlier, is... I have clients that are just hesitant to call. They don't think they can qualify or they don't want to bother a lender because they just, they don't think it's possible. Right. And as we've kind of pointed out here, there are a lot of different options and a lot of different ways that we can get right. creative from the financing end of things to try and make this work. And now, what if none of this is an option, okay? What At if least none of you this know. Is an right. Yeah, that's right. You're right. not set in the dark, and then yeah. then you know. Okay, well, in fact, if I want to make that move, I've got to sell my home. I've got to make a secondary move and go buy a new home. But as you said, Saul, it's really knowing your options and understanding what choices you have in the marketplace. That way, you can navigate it successfully. The more options you have, great. But trying to figure out what the right option is for you. Uh, to make that move, I think is key in that process. Um, one of the things that came to mind as we were talking here is the bridge loan. So I, I you know, you buy your home uh, without having to do anything on a bridge loan, then you can sell your house or rent it whenever you want. But let's say you've got a bridge loan, what's the time mm -hmm. frame for getting that old house sold in this process? Yeah, great question. So the bridge loan has a five month carry period. Okay. And so what will happen is once you take out the bridge loan, 
your Let's clarify. Take out the bridge loan means closing, correct? Right. So once, once you, you close on the new residence, correct. you have five months. Thank you. I didn't right. mean to shut you down, but I yeah. wanted to. No, yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. So once you close on the bridge loan, your first mortgage payment on that bridge loan, which will be interest only, by the way, okay. so it helps a little bit right. with convenience, is going to be about 45 days after you close, just like okay. a traditional mortgage. Right, right. Uh, and then you have five months from closing to refinance or pay off that bridge loan. And if uh, at the end of the day you carry enough equity that you pay off the bridge loan and maybe you could pay down that first on the new home, is recasting that loan an option in the process? Absolutely. I, I, I know that's been talked about in the past and it doesn't always apply, but are you finding more and more lenders are recasting the loan to the new payment schedule? So if you, let's say you had a loan for 800000 which would have a certain payment schedule, now it's 600000 you could reschedule that on a 30-year at $600,000 payment? Is that what you understand recast to be? Yes, that's exactly right. Okay. And recasting is a very popular option, a complete other topic that we should talk about as well. Right. Um, particularly with interest rates still somewhat elevated, as opposed to doing a refinance, people are recasting to lower their payments. So that is Got an option. It. Yeah. Got it. Okay, great. Uh, other things that you could think about uh, that are person going through this process, being a buyer, seller, need to understand in timing and coordination? Yeah, I think we, we've, for the most part, touched on everything. But as far as timing, coordination, and cadence, you know, what we are very good at is helping buyers figure out in, in uh, coordination with you as well, is when they're making an offer on a new home, we need to figure out what a good closing date is for the new home. Sure, you betcha in coordination with taking out the bridge loan and then also helping you to plan for after the fact on the departing home sale and right. how you'll pay off that bridge loan and refinance with us. So Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Well, Saul, it's been fabulous talking with you today. Thank you very much for sharing with our clients how to get through this process. As you can see, there are lots of options if you are in a home you don't love, whether you want to rent that home and buy another one or you just want to Get rid of that old house and get your next house, the one that fits your needs better today. There are lots of options in the marketplace to get you through that process. Reach out to me. We'll get you connected with Saul, and you can uh, get this process started and figure out what options work best for you. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Saul. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Tony. We'll talk with you again soon. Take care.